Chamberlain. Well, yes, indeed. He's uh, Alaba Yusuf. He's a member of the PDP and he's also a public analyst. He joins us uh, on the line this morning from Agora. Good morning, Mr. Yusuf, and thank you for joining us today. Well, yes, the news is everywhere. The list uh, is with the Senate. They're going to start screening today. The president, of course, the party expects that these set of people will be able to take the country and deliver on the party's next level agenda. What is your impression about the nominees on the list? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Shebalen, and uh, good morning, Nigerians. Um, <clears throat> it would be very interesting to have uh, names or portfolios of uh, ministerial uh, appointees or nominees attached to, um, uh, to, to the names, to, the, to whoever the nominees are. Because uh, you can do the same or same may not give uh, any different results. Uh, aside that, something is uh, profoundly um, uh, what is called profoundly <coughs> visible in the ministerial list. A lot of lawyers are back again. Like uh, usually, you have an Akpadio added to the lawyers, Kiyamo added to the lawyers, Malami, Fashola, and the rest. Um, we still have the nine members of this world and uh, a lot of them. <clears throat> we don't know what uh, will change. I'll be what will interest me the most is uh, the minister that will be in charge of national unity, the minister that will, that, that will create peace, the minister that will, uh, that, that will, that will uh, jumpstart or calibrate the economy. Um, with what I'm looking at, I don't know. Like uh, one of the um, speakers there has mentioned that uh, a cross-section of Nigerians are already saying uh, this list is not that inspiring, almost four months after uh, the election. Um, I don't know, to be specific, I don't know, because uh, Two things. I'm more concerned about security, I'm more concerned about economy. All right, uh, but, but before you come to that... Yeah. What do you mean, why, what is wrong if with the list of those you listed as being lawyers, what's wrong with them if uh, they make that list? And, and then what do you mean that who will be in charge of national unity? I don't get that part. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm saying. I want a ministry for national unity because the country... Are you with me? In trying to process the ministry, you want another ministry for national unity? Yes, I don't know whether something could be added because national orientation, as we are today, the country is divided, polarized. We all know that. And security has become a challenge. And where there's no peace, there may not be progress. So, we just see what uh, America has said about their visa restriction. We've seen the, the incident of uh, riots in, 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 at the center of, of the uh, economy, where you have the finance ministry, the foreign affairs. The international world is looking at us, and it's not good enough for us. So you know, what is this ministry... Just, uh, just a minute, pardon me. Well, what is this ministry of national unity going to do that all the ministries put together cannot do in their own capacity? We have not seen national orientation doing much or information doing much. You need people that are plausible and believable. You see, if you put somebody in charge, let it be somebody that people will believe in. With that, you know, I'm not saying people are not credible, but what we're talking about is that when people don't believe you, perception is very, perception is almost like reality. You know, because when you put some people in, in, in charge and people uh, have not seen their um, performance, you know, the, the, the indices that people judge people by. And now, the way things are, the list, to me, is not inspiring. I, I, I give respect to someone like a, a Senator Mamora. Someone like that can talk to people who will believe him. So, I'm, that's what I'm talking about. Talking about uh, Minister of National Unity. You could, could be part of information or part of anything, but the way things are, you know, there are some of the ministers that you... you I will talk to you, you don't believe them. I will all know that we know those we know who they are. So it's I don't know, it's not inspiring. I'd like to take it from where you, you, you stopped. Your party yesterday described this ministerial list as colorless, 
stagnant and in your words uninspiring in fact your party went on to say that you know this strange uh, this list did not create space for youth demography and you know you went on and on but i'd like to take you on uh, first on the part of colorless stagnant and uninspiring some are saying it's probably too early uh, to you know to judge or to sort of uh, rate this ministerial list so, so how do you respond to that well colorless is uh, i think it's might because Colorless is mine, so to say, because uh, uh, in my place, they say the eye that will follow you to your uh, to your old age will not start uh, coming with mocos in the morning you know, as a child. You see, the, uh, it would have been nice to say, okay, live one man will be in information. Then we can we'll now be able to talk. We'll now be able to, 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 to um, dissect and say, okay, what has he done successfully in information? And how informed are Nigerians? How believable is it? But if it's moving to under ministry, we don't know. So what we're saying that, that you can see that, like a one paper I put it today, that the material list has been chosen in respect of putting politics above policy. And, that's, and I think I agree with that newspaper. Mr. Yusuf, let, let's talk about representation now. You talked about youth representation uh, on that yeah, list. But you can see, <laughs> you, you, are, look, you are much younger than me. I don't know anybody of your age of my age in that place. Right. So I'm, I'm getting there. So let's take a look at, for example, women representation, because that's been a major issue. Past four years, we had 16% representation, 36 uh, you know, names on that list. Six of them were women. That's 16%. This time around, we have 43 names, seven of them women. That's also 16%. And the question is, the president has said he will work with people he knows. So people are saying perhaps he doesn't know much women or much young people. So the question is, what did you expect the president to do that he didn't do this time around? Uh, well, uh, it is difficult to... I don't have so much expectation because uh, the election has not been concluded. So once the uh, litigation, whatever, is, is, is off, the tribunal has finished its business, the Supreme Court gives judgment and the rest, then I think uh, that, that would be right to discuss. As of now, I don't think the election has been concluded. So I, will, I don't think much is being expected, to be, to be realistic. If you look at our education, look at, uh, just look at the ministries. Look at the ministries, I don't... A few of the people, I don't know them, but uh, the ones I know, I don't know how much they have performed. That's the truth. So, uh, as, as for women and youth, you, you have said that uh, maybe the president doesn't know many of them, or many people, many women, or many women, uh, young, young men, but the fact remains that uh, the president doesn't have to work with people that he knows. He has to work with competent people, people who have uh, competence, character, and uh, capacity, you know. So, and that's how this, uh, the, 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 the country can be moved forward. The way things are now, security, economy, I think they are, they, 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 they are paramount. And we need to address this. And foreign affairs as well, because our uh, in, in, uh, national and international reputation is at stake. At stake. We are not at war, but uh, we are being projected as being at war. And Mr. Yusuf. It's not, uh, yes. Mr. Yusuf, um... So you've just mentioned that uh, security and, and the economy are paramount, and I think from all the campaigning and everything of the government, that's uh, the two main fronts upon which they wrote. So of all the ministries that we have, which do you think government needs to be very, very frontal about, pay more attention to in order to galvanize uh, activities? to uh, answer some of the questions that you are hoping will be answered in the area of security and economy. Which ministries, maybe two, three, five ministries that you think government must give the most attention going forward? The ministers are like spokes in a wheel. They are like spokes in a wheel. And the, and the, and the, and the president is the, is the hub on which all the spokes are hinged. Each spoke as a role to play. But the fact remains that uh, former Vice President uh, Atiku Abaka once mentioned that if the head is bad, or the head is, you know, that the body of the fish will not be that okay. 
What we're saying here is that I don't know. We're talking about you need the people, ministry of the people. I'm talking ministry of the people where people will believe without peace, without unity, there cannot be any government. It's true. The governance will not be, good governance will not be there. If people have to believe in you, talking about security, you need people, you need intelligence. You need people to work with you. You need people to believe you. In a, in a situation where people think that they are not part of the system, they will cooperate. That's the, that's the bottom line. So it's not about who is in charge of what. It's about how do we relate to our people? Do they believe? Is that, is that representation? We'll get, uh, so we'll we'll get some response. Not, to what you've said, we appreciate your talking to us this morning. Mr. Alaba Yusuf is a member of the PPP.